Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Say, you all set for another visit with Valentine? I hope so. Because, as always, we have what I think is a real peachy little bit of mayhem in store for you. It's a little thing called Sucker Stunt, which will give you a rough idea as to what is about to take place. In case you want the gaps filled in, why don't you forget about me and watch how George handles the situation on Let George Do It. <laughs> Dear Mr. Valentine, I'll be back around 10.30 and then we'll get the guy. What? Go on. Well, that's all it says, George. Just a note shoved under the door. I found it when I opened up. Dear Mr. Valentine, I'll be back around 10.30 and then we'll get the guy. There's no time or signature. Hello. What's the matter? You waited for me, didn't you? Oh, I'm Tim McGean. Is that supposed to mean something? Well, sure, I'm the guy who... Yeah, I know, I know. You wrote this note. But you didn't sign it. I what? (laughs) <laughs> Why do you like that? I, I, I'm so wound up, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Sure, Tim again, that's my name. Sit down, you look worn out. Been up all night? Uh, working. Here, let me unload. Huh? I'm a photographer, see? Yeah, so I notice. Work up the north side of town. You know, weekly newspaper, that kind of stuff. I'm doing all right, see? I could support her myself. That's what gets me. That's what I don't understand. Her? I thought it was a guy you were out to get. Oh, well, sure. His name is Florio. Uh... I think you'd better start at the beginning. What happened? Did somebody steal your girl? Huh? Oh, no, no, no. It's my kid's sister, see? She's only 18, lives with an aunt, but I feel sort of responsible. But you know how girls that age are. She won't listen to anything. She mixed up with this guy? I'm afraid she'll marry him. This address is down here. What's wrong with him? Why do you need me? Look, Mr. Valentine, I'm just an ordinary dull jerk. My sister won't listen to me. But I want you to see this guy. All this romantic European stuff, there's something fishy with it. Look, I still don't get it. What's fishy about it? Look, he's never told her what his business is. And he won't tell her. He's a good 20 years older than her. I I phoned him once, you know, trying to meet him, have a beer or something. But you know what he said? It was none of my business. Had to stay away from him or I'd get a nosebleed. Ah, Nice guy. Okay, Tim, you got his address. Let's go take a look at Florio's nose. Uh, just for size. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a minute. Now back to George Valentine and Let George Do It. Are you married? Oh, I used to be, but she wasn't much. It was no good. We're sort of separated. Maybe that's it. I've been a sucker what about myself. You, uh, you said 412, didn't you? Florio's. We buy and sell. Looks more like a bookie joint. Jewelry, leather goods, exchange, musical instruments. Well, that must be him right there in the window, then. Dark boy with the light teeth. <laughs> Busy as a beaver. Okay, I'll go inside and take a look. Yeah, no, but what are you going to say? You'll spoil everything if, you, if you're telling don't me Don't worry, don't worry. I'll think of something. Look, if you can strike up a conversation, make them spend a little time, maybe you could... Wait a minute, here. Here, take this. Huh? Sell it to him. Your camera? Yeah, sure. It's got a couple scratches. Anyway, I got another. I get them wholesale. Well, from the looks of the place, you'll probably get clipped. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It'd be worth the price even to have that much on it. Here, ask for 175 That's what it was, wholesale. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's another sucker stunt, but okay. I'll wait for you. Hello. You, Florio? You the boss? Also the cook and bottle washer. Yeah. You have business? Uh, yeah. Of course, Mr. Valentine. It's a pleasure. Oh, you know me? Oh, yes. I have been in this neighborhood 15 years. What is it? The camera? Yeah. Sell or loan? Well, see what it's worth. Mm-hmm. 
Don't think I've ever stopped in your shop here before. Pretty good business? Pretty good taxes. How is your business, Mr. Valentine? You must get a great many strange cases. Oh, I do. Well, a Jefferson Mini, eh? Two nine lens. Yeah, good condition. Practically new. Oh, it seems a shame to sell. Uh, do you have a little time? Why? Oh, not about the camera. I just thought you might have lunch. You see, if, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, my wife is a great admirer of yours. Your uh, wife, Florio? My boss. My bed is three quarters. Not beautiful, but <laughs> then so am I. And such a wonderful uh, Florio, let me see huh? that camera a second, will you? Oh, the scratches. I didn't even notice. No, neither did I. Nice compact camera, though. Mm -hmm. Fits in my pocket without it even being noticed. Yes, why sell it? But if you wish, I give you a loan. But this is not important. It is lunch with me and my wife and children. I'd love to, and... Floria, but uh, some other time, okay? Uh-huh. Right now, I gotta straighten out a sucker. Yeah, but what did he say? What did he Here's the money. Twenty-five bucks. Twenty-five? What's the matter? Not enough? Oh, Sure, but... All right, come on back to the office. I want you to sign a receipt. But, Mr. Valentine, I got work to Look, do today. Look, if a guy's crooked, you want him nailed legally. Well, come on, come on, let's get going. Mr. Valentine, what is this? You've been driving almost three hours now. Mr. Valentine doesn't like to talk while he drives. But even when you went back up to the office, you didn't explain... I had some you... phone calls to make, that's all. I think he telephoned your sister, Tim. Oh, is that nice, Angel? Hmm? He knows he hasn't got a sister. Now, look. Just like he knows that the first time he saw Florio was probably when he walked by the shop this morning. Took a look at Florio so he could describe him to me. Look, I, I don't understand you at all. I don't know. Okay. If I'd known that you weren't going to believe anything I said, I'd have gone someplace else. Holy smoke, look at the time. I got work to do. What do you think you're taking me anyway? My wife will be worried if I don't phone her. Oh, I thought you said you were separated from your wife, that she was no good. Well, well, well How yeah. How could you phone her if she doesn't have a number? What? I checked that. While George was talking to the police. To the Well, Well, sure, sure. I really got a wife, but she don't live in a city. We don't even speak. What is this, Apple Junction? Don't you know? No, no. Never been out this way before. Oh, May I read him the early morning newspaper, George? It's just a little item, not very important. Um, Mr. Ben Roberts, a salesman for the Fruit Growers Equipment Company, said that he picked up the hitchhiker about 100 miles north of Apple Junction shortly after midnight, and that the man held him up and left him after traveling south only a few miles. The man was described as ordinary in appearance, about 35 years old, about 5 feet 9 inches in height, wearing overcoat and hat. Well, I, I guess that could be almost anybody, couldn't it? Hmm. Uh, taken from Mr. Roberts was $112 in cash, including a $50 bill, a good luck Canadian dollar, and a brand new camera, Jefferson Miniature with an F29 lens. Hey, that's a coincidence. Yeah, isn't it? Doesn't say anything about scratches, does it, Angel? Where the camera serial number should have been? No, George. Now listen, both of oh, you... Oh, Tim, it's as old as the hills, that gag. You want to fence a stolen item, but you see a newspaper story about it, so you want to be careful... You get somebody like me, who's known in the neighborhood, to make the sale for you. After I'd handed you the money, you'd have made up another bright story and disappeared. That's not true. I didn't say it was. I haven't accused you of anything. But, brother, you use the word sucker a little too loosely. Oh, I know I, I stick my neck out putting an ad like mine in the paper. And all too often, bright boys like you try to take advantage George, of it. George, turn right. There's the sheriff's office. Yeah. No, let me out. Please, let me out. I'll, I'll explain everything. For once, Buster, I'm going to make a sucker out of the guy who tried to make me a sucker. No, please. Please keep going. I, I didn't do it. i never even been this town before, honest. Well, well, look who's here. If it ain't Tim again. Been away? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, sucker. Now I start enjoying myself. <laughs> Well, Tim here has never really been in any trouble before, Mr. Valentine, but he sure fits the description. Yeah, I'll say he does. Oh, be quiet, will you? What are you doing here anyway, Ames? He's the hired hand out of my wife's place, Mr. Valentine. Nobody believes him. I sent for him just a few minutes ago. Well, day off. I guess I can do anything I want, can't I? Ben, 
Oh, Ben. Uh, right here, Sheriff. Just admiring the calendars in your office. Better than the ones in the barber shop. <laughs> oh, excuse me, lady. Ben Roberts, Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine. Roberts, the uh, one who was robbed at midnight last night? First time in 17 years on this road. Let me tell you, Mac, I've picked up hitchhikers all my life, and not a single one of them has ever held me up. Give it. Is this the guy, Ben? Of course not. Of course I'm not. Is he? Well, it was night. I don't want to just come right Here's out. Here's the camera. He scratched off the serial number. He hasn't been searched yet for the money, but... I'll do it right now. Let go. Let me Here. get your hands off. Here. Here's his wallet. It's your pen, ain't it, Ben? Me? Sure, with a trick flashlight. You showed it to me once, remember? Yeah. Look, I found it, I tell you. I found it someplace yesterday. I, I oh, don't stop know... stop trying so hard, Tim. Here's a $50 bill in the wallet. You don't see them very often. George, look, a Canadian dollar. Yeah. Oh, cut it out. I don't have to see all that stuff. You don't have to be a nice guy, Mr. Roberts. Yeah. Who's kidding who? I recognize him. Sorry, sucker. Okay, Sheriff, that's it. So long, Tim. I'll get even with you, Valentine. Hold on a minute, Valentine. Mm. You're not leaving. While you were out driving with this bird, I got another case. What do you mean? Well, apparently sometime around midnight last night, about 50 miles south of here, that's where Tim McGeehan's wife lived, well, that's when the doctor says she was murdered. What's that? What'd you say? My wife? Oh, no, she can't be. And at the same time, Tim was committing a robbery 100 miles north of town. That's what I mean, Valentine. I really need your help. Tim's the only good suspect. But since you proved he couldn't do it, I mean, well, now you've given him a perfect alibi. Okay, okay, Sheriff, don't rub it in. And all I wanted was to keep from being played for a sucker. Oh, brother. listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a minute. And now back to George Valentine. If your name is George Valentine, you don't enjoy being played for a sucker. And so when Tim McGean comes into your office with a weak-kneed story, you waste no time in turning the tables on him. You take him out to Apple Junction, where you prove that he committed the hitchhike robbery of a salesman north of town. Oh, no, you're no sucker. Not much. Because now you find that at exactly the same time, Tim's wife was being murdered south of town. Ben, you you could have made a mistake, couldn't you? Well, I might have, George. Uh, that's your name, isn't it, George? We had a sales manager once whose name yeah, was... Yeah, well, I mean, uh, when you identified that guy, he's strictly a medium-sized, medium-everything character. You can say that again. Well, uh, you you hesitated. Yeah, I remember you hesitated. Uh, that's right, George. So I did. A man hates to point a finger at another man and say, put him in jail. Yeah, I know how you feel. But, uh... Maybe you were wrong. Well, huh? now, a man's a fool if he don't say he's wrong once in a while. At least that's what the milkman said to the prize fighter's wife. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> well, it was late at night. Maybe you were out with some of the boys earlier. Uh, don't remember too well. Tell you a funny thing about me, George. I like a good time as well as the next fella, but not when I'm working. See that? You don't get solid gold watches in my outfit for just flirting with waitresses. No, sir. Last night, I might have been tired, but I was wide awake and alert. Anyway, how do you explain all that stuff of mine? He had it, didn't he? Okay, Ben, okay, skip it. His uh, wife was quite a dish, I understand. Search me. But she owned an orchard, the sheriff says. Yeah, that's what bothers me most. Tim McGean's the only one to benefit from her death. And he's got a perfect alibi. Don't take it so hard, Valentine. We haven't even got a fingerprint crew from the city out there yet. Apparently it wasn't just a cold-blooded murder. No, no, she was strangled and slugged over the head. Crime of passion. 
That's all it could be where a woman like Doris McGeehan was concerned. So if it wasn't done for a money motive, then I don't see why you think it had to be Tim McGeehan. Angel, I'm going to throw a curve back at that guy if it's the last thing I do. Come on, let's go see where it happened. Okay. Hey, you, Ames. Yeah? Come on with us. Ames? Yeah, McGeehan's hired hand. He can show us around. Nice orchard. Not a bad-looking little place. Yeah, careful of the loose board there. Hey, get off the porch. Who is it? Hello, Joe. My deputy. Mr. Valentine, Miss Brooks. Oh, come in, folks. You weren't here yesterday, Mr. Ames? Oh, no, ma'am, not me. Day off. I always go fishing on my day off. Spend the night in the hills. Here you are, Mr. Valentine. Here's where the body was. Uh-huh. Who found it? Joe here. Come out to ask a couple questions about Tim after you phoned, saying you had him. Yeah. Certainly was a fight here, wasn't there? You'll see. Table knocked over and rug kicked up. Yeah, and the front door was open just the way it is now. George, where are you going? Back door. Through here, isn't it? That's right, Mr. Valentine. Yeah. Locked. Hey, what are you doing? I want to shut the front door, that's all. Uh huh. Latch was on this one, too, wasn't it? What are you driving at? Oh, simple type crime, Sheriff. Uh, Ames, uh, where did you say you were last night? Yeah, well, well, up in the hills, I told you. Sure, I know, but, uh, where are the fish you caught? Well, I only got one. I ate it. Now, looky here. You notice the two glasses there on the table, Sheriff? Yeah? You say Mrs. McGeehan had no particular friends or anybody? Well, there's a couple of fellas, but it only took about two seconds to cross them off fast. One was up in San Francisco, the other was a party. Never mind. I think I know how to wrap this crime up for you fast. And I'll enjoy doing it, too. George, what are you talking about? We're not far from the highway, Valentine. Almost any transient or bum could have wandered over All right, look at the evidence, Sheriff. Mrs. McGean was alone, right? Uh Then someone came, a man, but he couldn't have just broken in because both doors were locked. Well, that's true, but If he'd been a stranger, there's a telephone. She could have called for help. Besides, wherever it was, she gave him a drink. Well, you got to break Tim McGean's alibi. He hated her, I tell you. They fought lots of times. I've seen him. Ames, I know it'd be nice if we could hang it onto him, but we can't. So who's left but you? Well, now, wait a minute, Sheriff. He paid no attention to her, only worked well, to I told you it was a simple crime. Just because you know him, stop shutting your eyes to the obvious. Well, let go, let go of me. I didn't Ames, do it. Ames, come back. I, I didn't. I'm not going to get railroaded. In. Look no. out, George. Oh, no, you don't. Bust it. <laughs> Holy smoke. He's such a nice guy. All right, you got your murderer, Sheriff. Lock him up. <laughs> Valentine, I know you're sore at me. All right, if I use your one chair, Tim? Oh, sure, sure. Not a very fancy cell, I'm afraid. Tim, now listen to me. I was sore at you, sure. That camera deal you played me for a sucker. Well, I I never pulled a robbery before. For a while, I thought maybe you'd suckered me into helping you with a gratuitous alibi. Mr. Valentine... All right, forget it. Relax, would you? Sheriff will be here in a minute. He's got Ames, all right. What? Yeah, so I, uh, I thought I'd better be a nice guy and warn you what the penalty is for armed holdup. Robbing a man of several hundred bucks worth of stuff. But what did you say about Ames? You'd better worry about yourself for a change, Tim. What? Of course, first offense could be heavy. You might be out in a couple of years, but... uh... Look, what are you driving at? I I know what a dumb thing I did. Oh, no, no, maybe it was smart. This man, Ben Roberts, got held up last night up north and reported it as soon as he got into town. The early morning papers printed the story. Well, that was quite a break. Good piece of luck. Piece of what? Look, you're getting me all mixed up. You didn't come to see me until after the banks had opened, 10.30, remember? So you'd have had a chance to go get some money, pick up a Canadian dollar and a new camera. After all, the newspaper told you what kind to buy. No, that's not true. I don't know what you're talking about. Then what's that you said about Ames being... Let go of me, will you? Let go of me. Cut it out, Ames. Get in there. Sheriff, listen. Get me a lawyer. The lawyer's not going to do you any good. Get me a lawyer. Well, I'll be a... So that's it. He did it. Ames did it. He killed Doris. Now, you see what I mean about thinking of yourself? The penalty for robbery, Tim, could easily be five years. You sent for me, George? Hmm. Oh, yeah, Ben. Stick around. Uh, You too, Sheriff. I can't get over it. Ames. He never even noticed Doris, just a hired hand. I I, I ran. I didn't even think of looking for him. What did you say? I I mean... Five years, Tim. So how about it? I understand what kind of a spot you were in. The only big suspect for her death. 
She played around and you hated her, even if you didn't live there anymore. Mr. Valentine, I don't know what... I gave you a start a minute ago, huh? You read about Ben's robbery in the newspaper. You knew nobody would ever believe you unless you had a foolproof alibi. You figured it was better to take a lesser rap in order to make sure of dodging the gas chamber. Hey, hey, what's all this, George? Oh, well, you gave me the idea, Ben. You wouldn't have described the hitchhiker in such general terms unless you really hadn't got too good a look at him. But he had my camera. Well, he was running. He was in the city. He saw a list of what was stolen in the newspaper. He realized he'd fit the vague description. So, he went around and bought the stuff, filed the serial number off the camera so you couldn't check it. And also so I'd be sure to see through his story and nail him. In fact, he hired me to nail him. Holy smoke. Oh, uh, Sheriff, ask the other guy to step in here, will you please? Sure. You, come in here. That's all right. Just stand there in the door. Uh-huh. Medium-sized, about 35. Wearing hat and overcoat. What about it, Ben? What do you mean? Could that guy be the one who held me up? Oh, <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Who is he? Cop, I dressed up. Okay, thanks, Joe. <laughs> you don't that beat all? You know, I'll grant you, it is pretty hard to identify a man. Never when... mind, never mind. I'll tell the truth. Well, now you're getting smart, Tim. Only what happened that made you so sure you had to pull all this? Yes, what did you mean a second ago when you said you ran? You didn't even think of looking for Ames. Well, I, I was there after it happened at the All right, go on. They'll need your testimony. Well, I went down to see Doris last night. I was good and sore. She'd been playing around with guys on the QT. Even if we are separated, it doesn't mean that you can... Well, anyway, my fingerprints are probably all over the house. But when I got there, the door was open. She was lying there, dead. I ran, hopped a truck to the city, but... I had to make up something, didn't I? And a robbery north of town was the golden opportunity, sure. Brooksy, you get all that down? I got it all, George. What? Sure, if that does it... You can turn Ames loose now. I've broken the sucker's alibi. Why, you dirty... Oh, no. Stop him! Cut it out. Cut it out. All right, now take it easy. I didn't say you killed your wife, did I? <laughs> well, what's the matter? There's a fair chance he didn't. He just took advantage of a lucky break, that's all. The holdup. What are you driving at, Valentine? Hasn't it occurred to any of you that the holdup itself might be phony? What's all this? Yeah, that Ben here is just about the type guy who might have been mixed up with Doris McGee on the QT. The big traveling salesman. Oh, 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 George, you're crazy. That last night he could have come into town from the south instead of the north after throwing away his camera and money and a Canadian dollar. Oh, Buster, it sure must have scared you today when the robber showed up. And of all people, her husband. You gonna let him talk like that, Sheriff? I never even met this Doris. When we searched you today, Tim, you had Ben's fountain pen, the one with the trick flashlight, remember? But if he took it off me last night when he held me up, uh, I mean... Careful, Ben, careful. Don't get tangled up now. If anybody had stolen it from you, they'd have taken it out of your pocket, right? And if so, why didn't they take that solid gold watch you're so proud of? George, that's right. Hey. Of course, Tim claimed he'd found the pen someplace. Sure, that's So it uh, couldn't have been stolen anyway, huh? Wait a minute. Let me think. Never occurred to me. Found it yesterday, you said, Tim. Come on, now, I remember. Sometime yesterday, a last Don't night. Don't listen to him. How would he know where I'm he... trying to remember. Shut up. Where'd you find it? Where, Tim? Someplace around your wife's farm, maybe. Last night, maybe. Wait. Wait, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, sure, the pen. I picked it up. Sure. I know where. Sure. Mr. Roberts. No. Look out. Get out of my way. I'll kill you too. Grab him, Sheriff. That doesn't... Oh. George. George, I know Ben Roberts is the murderer, but the only trouble is... Look at Tim McGean's face. Like the cat that ate the mouse. Of course, he did make a sucker out of you, but... Brooksy, stick around. In about two seconds, I'll settle once and for all who's the sucker in this case. are listening to Let George Do It. You will hear the conclusion of our adventure in just a minute. Mr. Valentine, he confessed, so what's the difference? Uh, tell me now. 
Where did you find this pen, Tim? Well, you don't need it as evidence. I'll remember eventually, but last night I was so scared and upset... That you don't remember at all. Well, it must have been around a farm someplace. Uh-huh. You just pretended you knew so that he'd... Uh... Well, it did the trick. Boy, that guy's a real sucker. <laughs> You're pretty good at taking people in, too. Well... But it's so stupid. If you'd come to George in the first place and told him the truth instead of going out to buy that camera and pretending... Robert's phony hold-up story might never have been broken. Ah, he's right, Angel. The way it worked out. So, now I'm all clear. I pick up my $50 bill and camera from the sheriff and walk out. I gamble my whole savings and maybe five years in prison, and now I'm free and it don't even cost me a cent. Hmm. Whole savings account, huh? Well, here, uh, look at this. Camera's worth over 200 retail, isn't it? Well, sure, I can get at least... Hey, wait a minute. No, give me that. Oh, no. Here's the receipt you signed. I bought that camera for 25 bucks. Get the picture? <laughs> so long, sucker. You have just heard Sucker Stunt, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey is starred as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now, this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 